what is CLEP and what is testing out? So CLEP is college level exam program. It is a exam product that's authored by the college board. I am in no way affiliated with the college board. They don't endorse this presentation or college, um, I was going for college credit or anything like that. So that we're completely independent from them, but they are the same people who administer the PSAT, the SAT and advanced placement. So you're probably familiar with those. Um, so the CLEP program is a multiple choice test that any student can do. And so this is really kind of the key here as to what makes it, it so different from AP, because in an AP or in an advanced placement situation, there is a pretty set curriculum. So if you're going to have your student do AP in high school, you have to either create your own class and get it approved. You have to find a class that's doing it, or you have to hop into a class like through one of the public or private schools. All of those are ways that your student can take an official AP class and you can put it on their transcript. Now, here's the thing, that AP class, as hard it is to get into, it could be expensive and, it, and it's a lot of work. That is not what's worth college credit. It's only the AP exam. So when you look at something like CLEP versus AP, you have a lot of the same subjects, but CLEP is much easier to do because it's a multiple choice exam that anyone can study for using any uh, type of, of resources that they want. So if you have a student who learns best through videos, your entire program of their studying can be from videos and documentaries and, and you know on YouTube even. If you have a student who prefers to read out of a textbook, a paper textbook, then they can do that. So they're gonna do an independent study and that part of it is really what's going to be separate and different. Now, the standardized exam for CLEP is multiple choice on a computer. So they're going to just point with the mouse and click. If they were doing advanced placement, they would have to handwrite their answers and they would have to go to um, a testing location and they would have to manually write that out. So there's a lot of big differences. But in many cases, if it's for college credit, when a college um, is evaluating uh, a, an AP exam or a CLEP exam, if they're doing it for college credit, then you will see that colleges often award the exact same credit for both exams. So if a student did the AP psychology exam and another student did the, the CLEP psychology exam, both of those students are gonna get college credit for Psych 101. So they're, they come through exactly the same, yet CLEP is considerably easier. But I do like to talk about AP because my belief is that when your student studies for a CLEP exam, that we're gonna use the AP model. I think that's very important. So what's the AP model? Well, the AP model is that they do the learning first, they actually take a homeschool class with you. Um, and then at the completion of that class with you, then they can test out and they can do test prep. So the CLEP works really well for homeschool students. And that is because you can use any of the materials that you like. There's no rules. You can use religious or secular online in a book. It doesn't matter. Any age or grade can do CLEP. That's, um, going to be true for your students that are younger than 11th and 12th grade, but also true for the older siblings who maybe already graduated high school or even mom and dad. So anyone can do CLEP and you can now do it on um, the computer at home and they do like an online proctoring. So you no longer even have to go to a testing center. So CLEP can be super accessible uh, for anyone, which works great for homeschool students because then you don't have to contact the schools about getting in, into an AP class or an AP test. As far as the college credit piece, um, about three fourths of the colleges in this country will award college credit in some amount for passing a CLEP. So that's very, very high. Now, of course, if, if you go up the selectivity chain, then the higher up the selectivity, the less likely that they are going to be able to get college credit for that. So if you are you know, at the end of the high school journey, if you're talking about an 11th and 12th grader, there's a good possibility that by now you have an idea as to whether or not your student is gonna be aiming for a selective college or not. Um, so if you are aiming for a super selective college, then you're gonna to wanna to modify this a little bit. And instead of using CLEP, you're probably gonna to wanna to use AP. But if you're unsure, then my vote is always gonna be on the CLEP because CLEP is, um, is held for 20 years and you can have absolutely no cost. So you can accumulate and stockpile college credit using CLEP, and there's absolutely no consequences if the student fails. They can retake it as often as they want. You do not have to ever report um, failed uh, exams or even passing exams for that matter to a future college. So it's just, it's just great. It's all upside. There's no reason not to do it. Back when we did not have a way of doing CLEP for free, we always had to weigh the pros and the cons of the cost, right? But that's gone. And you're using the AP model, so you're lining this up with with high school curriculum that they're already you know, doing anyway, you're not putting in extra work, you're not spending any extra money or any extra time. So it's, 
it's just low hanging fruit. It makes good sense. And I feel like um, it's probably something that every parent should take full advantage of with their kids. Because you can choose any type of learning material, um, my recommendation is that you use the advanced placement model for their current classes. So for instance, if you're a rising 11th grader was planning on studying chemistry this year, just stick with that. And what you'll do is you'll do the chemistry class. And then at the end of the year, you'll have them take their CLEP exam. So they're not CLEPing out of the high school class. They're doing a high school class. They're CLEPing out of a college class. Because any age or any grade can take a CLEP exam, they can start now. So you're going to have them do this in high school before matriculation. And matriculation is the act of them enrolling in the college. Now, why do I say before matriculation? Can't anyone take a CLEP? Yes, anyone can. Adults can too. But that act of enrolling in a college sometimes changes how a college will allow your student to use CLEP. And so it's a fine detail and it will vary from college to college. But if your student is going to enroll directly after high school, you're going to want them to finish their CLEPs before they enroll. A lot of times colleges will not let them bring in CLEP credit once they're already enrolled. Now, if if they're wanting to do a gap year, CLEP is super gap year friendly. It's not going to change their freshman application status in any way. Um, and they're not yet matriculated. So that means that during that gap year, they can continue earning college credit with CLEP. But before they then officially enroll, that's when you want all their CLEP to be done. All right, so let's talk just a little tiny bit about the money piece of it, right? So every credit that they're resourcefully doing now is one less that you're going to have to pay for later. And I use the term resourcefully planned all the time because what that is, is that's kind of an intentionality of the parent really making sure that what they're doing is going to pay off later. And it's okay for their first few credits to just be something that is going to be an easy win. But as they start to accumulate credits, you want to be intentional. You want to be resourceful. You want to make sure that what what they're doing and what you're doing is actually going to pay off and it will pay off. It'll pay off in cutting time and also cutting money. Um, one of the things that is really important for you guys to think about is the four-year degree is going to have four levels of credits. The first two levels, the 100 and 200 level are considered lower level. And then the last two levels, 300 and 400 are considered upper level. Now, all of the discounts, all of the free credit, all of the credit by exam, all of the things that we talk about in homeschooling for college credit are almost always limited to lower level credits. That is where you're going to have the easiest time of accumulating college credit. Your student could legitimately earn two years of college credit for free through CLEP, okay? But what's gonna happen is at some point, they will have to proceed onto the years 300 and 400, the last two levels. Those credits, very, very hard to save money on, very hard to get affordably. Those are your expensive credits. So it is super important that you remember that all of the discounts, all of the plans, all of the programs, all of the freebies are now, and they are going to be available when your student is earning those first 60 credits. Once they get to college, once they're working on those upper levels, that's when it gets harder to save money. So if you have a college fund, if they get scholarships, if you have other financial resources, save that money for those 300 and 400 level. Do not burn it on 100 and 200 because you can do that for free. And so one year of college is about 10 classes, 30 credits. It's less important that every single CLEP gets used later, in my opinion. It's more important that if they have the knowledge, they go ahead and they take the exam because you can take unlimited CLEPs completely free with your modern state voucher. So if they take um, a biology class in ninth grade and now they're in 11th grade, you can go back and get that biology CLEP exam and they can take that and have that college credit. They don't have to do a whole new biology class to try it. So accumulating these credits and, and so forth is really a good practice because it's, again, it's based on things that they've already learned in homeschooling. It's based on the fact that they can have that, that banked credit for 20 years and they've got their whole lifetime to use it. And I do understand that sometimes a parent will be nervous about that because a certain college that their student is looking at maybe doesn't take CLEP exams. It is my opinion that you should collect that credit anyway. It does not harm your student in any way doesn't cost you anything. Um, and the credit that goes unused may come into play later. If they, as an adult, they return to college and study something else, they're at a different school, they might be able to use that credit for something else, even if it's just an elective. So one thing that most adults will agree on is that it's 
certainly easier to test out of college algebra when it's fresh in your brain instead of going back as a 40 year old. So I would just say that while they've got this knowledge fresh in their brain, it's a really good time to pick up all those club credits. Mm -hmm.